YouTube fam, it's your favorite girl, Jay Shara, coming back to you with yet another reaction video. Today's video that I will be focusing on is coming from Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast. I have not reacted to him in so long and I'm just super excited to get into this video. However, if you have not read the title, I'll let you know I'm going to be looking at a video that's titled Giving Advice to a Person Who Lost It All. Before we jump into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, and follow your favorite girl on Instagram at jshar with an H at the end. Let's get into it. Dear Bill, this is going to be a sad letter, so if you don't feel like dealing with this today, I understand. <clears throat> uh, yeah, fuck this letter. <laughs> I'm not reading it. No. <laughs> Truthfully, I think I'm writing you for the same reason Catholics go to confession. Don't worry, I know you can absolve me of my sins. Five years ago, I switched jobs when I went, and when I did, I rolled my company 401k into what's known as a self-directed 401k. My family and I also moved that year, and I took the proceeds from the house sale and dumped those into an individual account with the same broker. Oh, God. It wasn't much by some people's standards, but, dude, if it's all you have, it's a lot. It wasn't much by some people's standards, but between the two accounts, it amounted to our life savings. I did what any sane person would do and bought a bunch of safe stuff and tried not to look at it very often. Then came the pandemic. I actually mm. sold everything at the perfect time. Yes! Okay. Oh, please tell me you didn't get into Bitcoin. Oh God. I think I was the second or third, it was the second or third week in February before everything really went to hell, but I took a long, long time getting back in, and when I did, I didn't play it safe anymore. Oh God. Oh boy, this has fucking too many twists and turns here. Right. For a year, I did very well and doubled our life savings, and during that whole time, it never occurred to me the real risk I was taking. Cue the, oh Jesus, fast forward to yesterday and spent two solid years a bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. First, I was long when everything was going. First, what? To down hard. What? What? First, I was long when everything was going, I think going down hard in 2022. Then I was short when everything was just kept going up, up, up in 2023. An absolute epic meltdown brought by tens on by tens, if not hundreds of individual bad decisions. So here I just am. talk normal. It's like early what? February and there's basically nothing left. I know you're probably thinking I'm some degenerate gambling addict, but I swear it's not true. True. I don't bet on sports, only been to casino twice in my life and probably lost $150 combined. I drive a 20 year old SUV and live in a regular house. Don't drink, don't smoke. I just got overwhelmed slowly at first, then all at once. My question is simple. How do I forgive myself? How does a man forgive himself when his selfish and foolish actions cost the people he loves? Thank you for any advice you can give, and thanks for all the laughs over the years. God bless and go diddle yourself. Uh, easy. You take responsibility for your actions. You apologize to everybody, and you promise that you're going to do everything in your efforts to, to make it, it back. right. And then you go out and you do that. And... Um, the worst thing you can do right now is act like the game's over, your life is over. Facts. This is a moment in it. And you know what? You built yourself a great preamble to the story of your success. Yeah. Of losing it all and coming back. Do you know how many successful people I know that have lost it all and then came back? Um, success is not Linear. trying something going out being successful and being and then that's it it's not a linear thing right um journey success is just stepping out into the abyss and free falling into something hitting the water and then trying to swim and there's moments where it's fucking white water and then it becomes calm and, and then, then a waterfall, a waterfall exactly yeah. <clears throat> what it is. Fucking roller coaster. Is not allowing yourself to get too down or too life is crazy. Too high and keeping between your ears positive, which is what you need right now. Facts. Right now, you're beating yourself up. This video so came right on the, time. The pity party is over. Just you tell your wife that. 
Just be like, listen, I want you to know that the pity, you know, I still feel unbelievable shame for what I did, but the pity party is over, and I'm going to make you proud of me again. And then you just go out and you just fucking whatever the direction is that you want to be going in. I don't know what you do for a living. Um, and you build it back up again. And I'm going to tell you something. You will get, you know, if you do that, if you don't just look at this like this is the end of your journey, it's the beginning of your big comeback, okay? Um, I feel that, you know... He's speaking to me too. He's going to love you. They're going to be... Now they're going to be like looking at you like you're going to teach them. Yeah. You're going to actually give them a life lesson here. Yeah. So the life lesson here is, you know, you don't stick all your eggs in one basket and I hate to tell you this, but Wall Street, you might as well go into a casino. Casino, it happens quicker, but Wall Street is 100% fucking rigged. I mean, the House and Senate voted that they can't get tried for insider trading. They make a couple hundred grand a year. They're all, their portfolios, generally speaking, are worth upwards of $20 million. Okay, they're getting all kinds of insider trading. There's a bunch of different ways to make money still in this country. Um... And I think the fact that you're conservative at heart is a good fucking thing. It seems like you just got a little crazy. So just learn from this lesson. Right. And uh, tell yourself you're going to figure it out and go fucking figure it out. And do it. Um, as simple as that. My stand-up career, I mean, I, I, I've i had so many fucking ups and downs in this thing where, you know, sometimes things that were supposed to be good this happens it actually leads to like a down period or whatever and i like i had periods starting off nobody knowing who i was and then all of a sudden people knowing who i am mm -hmm. you know getting big gigs having a fucking manager and big agency then all of a sudden shit cools off my agency i've been dropped by like i don't know how many agencies mm -hmm. have dropped me um i've been fired by managers I've gone all the way from being out here in L.A. and having a one-bedroom apartment and driving a car to losing all of that, going back to my walk-through bedroom mm -hmm. apartment, living with Bobby Kelly now, and we shared the walk-through bedroom part. Like, he slept in the living room on a pull-out couch, you know, becoming unincorporated and just went through a six-, seven-year period of just, like, trying to put it all back together again, just not being able to get arrested before I started to get it going again. Mm -hmm. And um, and even then, like, I, I still have, like, like setbacks, you know? I, I got a really good role in this movie, and I was thinking, like, oh, man, this is going to be a great thing. I'll get to do the talk show circuit. You know, maybe I'll get some good press. I can start getting some better acting roles. And then the pandemic comes, and the movie comes out during the pandemic. It does really well, but, you know, didn't get to do hype. I do old dads. I'm all excited about it. I'm really blah, 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 blah. And it fucking comes out during the strike. And it was this Damn. massive fucking hit that no one really talked about because it did that. And it's just, you know, those are like little gut punches. Yeah. I mean, the amount of time that me and Ben Tenshel put in that fucking movie, it was like a, it was like four years of our lives. And it just kind of, you know, came out and, very quietly crushed. I mean, it did amazing, and it's definitely opened some doors, but, you know, I didn't get to do, like, what everyone was telling me. Oh, my God, when this thing comes out, we're going to get you on this show, you're going to mm -hmm. be able to cover this magazine, you got that. <laughs> Nothing, none of that happened. Mm -hmm. So even when you're, like, being successful, like, shit like this still fucking happens. You know what you say? You just go, well, what am I, fucking special? You gotta keep going. Is no bad shit supposed to happen to me? Every fucking person in the business that I am in... In the world. ...can sit down and talk way longer about getting kicked in the nuts than they can about going over the moon. Mm -hmm. Because, um... That's kind of what life is. You know, it's like this fucking... You know, you win, and then the next day there's another game. And man. you might lose at that fucking game. So that's man. where you're at, man. You, you, you know, you had a bad season. You lost some games, you're on a losing streak, you just got to fucking turn it around. And success is really... So much of it is how you handle when you get your dick knocked in the dirt. And if you could just fucking go, all right, nice shot. Dust yourself off. 
You know, Hulk Hogan, that fucking, they go to drop your hand that last time and you stop it. You fucking put it up in the air and you start fucking nodding your head. You get up to one knee. That's just what you got to do. It just really is. And I'm telling you, man, don't believe all of this shit that people say about Hollywood where they, uh, you know, because these fucking idiot actors got to ram their politics down everybody's throat. So now everybody's like saying, fuck Hollywood. This whole idea that everybody is out here just fucking sitting around a pool, not doing anything like, um, when I get into business to do a project, I am always astounded at how hard people work. They're like, they're psychotic, the level that they work. They're mm -hmm. fucking like workaholics. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking 13, 14 hours a day, and they don't get paid overtime. It's just, it's just what it is. Day in and day out, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, your phone is blowing up with fucking a zillion goddamn questions when, you know, you're trying to shoot a TV series or a movie. It's like, they're out there, everybody is busting their ass, but what does the paparazzi show? They show people fucking vacationing in, in whatever the fuck they go, some island. Um... And even then, that's work because they call the paparazzi. They're not the fucking feds. They don't know where you're at. They call the paparazzi. You know, they don't eat for fucking <laughs> a bunch of days. And then they put on a bathing suit and then they got to have that. Oh, oh, you caught me. Fucking, it's all bullshit. That's even their vacation oh, wow. is fucking work. So anyway, I'm sorry this shit happened to you, but you got to fucking turn it around. Okay. And, and that what's great about life is when you get in the mindset that um, your success and your f failure is nothing more than your decision. So whatever you decide Rex. to do, you can make the decision that this fucking event in the stock market you. is what destroyed you. And then you can go down to some stupid bar and tell your sad sack story to some other fucking sad sack who's also decided that they're a loser in life. Or Rex. you can just decide that, hey man, I fucking took a nice opinion. shot, got knocked on my ass, and I'm fucking getting up. X. And I'm going to come back even stronger this time. Mm -hmm. All right? That's what I hope for you. Okay. There you go. There's your fucking halftime speech. <laughs> All right. And that is the podcast, everybody. <laughs> I right, agree with a, not even a lot. All of the things that Bill Burr expressed to that um, person who wrote the letter. And I feel like the message was so on point. The other night, my best friend and I, we were just on FaceTime, having a heart to heart, and she's been going through things, I've been going through things, everyone in the world have been going through just a great deal of shit. And we were having the conversation and she expressed, you know, Jay, I'm just extremely tired. She just feels like there's just so many different other things that are coming at her. Um, not even just with my family, like with her, she's been having deaths in her family. She's been going through it with her significant other, stress at work, her living situation isn't up to par. And just over the years that I've known her, because I've known her for a while, I just say I won't disclose which friend it is, but we were just having a heart to heart and I completely felt her. It was just like, I understand like over, especially like within this past I wanna say decade or even the past five years, it's just been a great deal of things that I've been through. And sometimes I just get tired and I wanted to say respectfully, like having a heart to heart with God, it's like, God, I know that the intended goal is for me to lean closer to you and be faithful or remain faithful or even come out a stronger individual. But over time, these different trials and tests become very annoying. And I don't know if that's disrespectful to say, but it's just like, I know at the end of the day, I'm not going to give up. So everything that I'm going through is just becoming very annoying. And it comes down to a point where it's just like, I'm fucking tired. But at the end of my discussion with my best friend, I basically highlighted, you just have to remain faithful. You have to remember your goals. You have to keep, like Bill Burr said, you have to keep that thing in the middle of your ears positive. One little tiny negative thought can really transcend and change the whole trajectory of your life. And I saw a message the other day. It stated basically the older you get, the more you realize how intentional you have to be 
to create a great life for yourself, to enjoy life, to have a good life, to experience great things and not not all the time everything's are not all the time everything is supposed to be rainbows and butterflies. But if you do get knocked down, stand up again. If you lose everything, do everything in your power to gain it back. And nobody ever said this shit is easy it's very difficult like me i'm going through a situation where i just switched states i had to leave my family behind again i'm on my own my brother just died my father just died but there's just something inside of me yes i have my days sometimes i have my days every single day but i just have to pray and be like you know what god just give me strength like all i need today is strength and i got it from here like just continue waking up and saying i will not quit until i get it and one thing about consistency is if you don't stop you're going to get to where you go or you're going to get to where you want to be eventually just be consistent and show up every day and I really enjoyed that discussion on Bill Burr's morning Monday, Monday morning podcast. As I said prior, I do feel like that message was right on time. I might even send it to my best friend because we were literally just having this conversation. If you enjoyed this reaction video, be sure to give me a beautiful thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, and follow your favorite girl on Instagram at jshar with an H at the end. If you have other recommendations for me to react to, don't hesitate dropping that down in the comments section other than that you all know that i love you you love yourself 10 times more have a beautiful day or night in this amazing world ciao